Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video all about warp snail aimed specifically at those of you that are new to the system or just ordered it and waiting for it to arrive or maybe you've just got it and you're starting to unbox it. I'm doing this because I've got a couple of flight buddies who are investing in the warp snail system and to be honest it's kind of handy to have one video to watch rather than have to watch 15-20 videos on YouTube about stuff. Now, I'm making this video at the end of March 2023, so be aware that things are changing, more firmware and firmware updates are coming out that change things slightly, but it's pretty stable enough now, and hopefully stable enough so this video, at least for the next six months, be reasonably in date. Now, I did a little thing on YouTube asking for people what I should talk about in this video, and thank you to every single one of you. There were some fantastic ideas, so I'm going to put time codes down below for all this stuff. So if you have a specific thing that you want to know about, you can just jump to that part. Or if you're new to the Walksnail system and want to know all of the basic tips and tricks you need to get the most from it for a new pilot, get your coffee, get comfortable, and I'll run through everything. Now I'm going to talk specifically about these two things here. These are the full fat Walksnail goggles available all in black and dark grey from Walksnail directly or there is a fat shark version that you'll see in some of my videos which is white and grey. And also this system here, this is the VRX plugged into my fat shark HDO2s. We're going to talk about both of these as we go through. So irrespective of which one you have, hopefully the information in the video is going to be useful. Now, the first thing to talk about is where to go for the manuals and files. I would go to this address here on the Cadix website, and everything you need to know is in here, including the manuals and the documentation and firmware and other pieces. We're going to refer back to this page quite a bit as we go throughout the next five, ten minutes. I think it's important to mention that there are actually three different ways, not the two that I've just shown, that you can get into the system. The first is using that VRX, which is a little piece of technology that you put on the front of your existing analog goggles, or you can plug into any screen that accepts a HDMI input. And that then will connect to the avatar unit that you put inside your model and allow you to display the video. Now, the cool thing about this is only about £200, uh, and it means you can convert an existing set of very nice goggles for that kind of money. Then, at the other end of the spectrum, we have those full fat goggles. These are the full Walksnail goggles, again, available in two versions, one from Fat Shark, one from Walksnail. They're essentially exactly the same goggle, just with different coloured plastics. They are about 550 However, there is a middle option, and this is one that not a lot of people have been talking about. And that is the fact that Fat Shark also do the Recon HDs. These are based on the Recon goggles that I think are absolutely spectacular. Recon goggles were one of those things that kind of flew below the radar. And although I was banging on how great they are, they didn't really seem to catch on because everyone wanted the binocular style. They're only about £80 more than the VRX unit, and they are the full goggles. Now, there's no one magic bullet here. Not every goggle is going to suit every individual. And there are kind of differences in terms of their functionality. Obviously, the more money you get, the higher quality image that you get. But it does mean that you don't have to spend 550, 600 pounds or dollars to enter the walk snail part of the hobby. There are two top tips that I will give you when you get your system to get the absolute best from it. First and foremost is to update the firmware. I'll talk a little bit more about how you do that in a moment, but you can get the firmware from the website. Guess what? We're going to go back to that page again, link down below, and you can download the latest firmware. There are different versions. The one called avatar underscore GND is for the full goggles there's the avatar underscore sky is for the avatar units that you put inside the models and then you have the avatar se underscore ground which is for that vrx module that goes on the front of your goggles you very simply copy that file onto the root directory of the sd card that you have in your avatar unit and then power it up and press and hold the bind button for eight seconds and it will do the update. One thing to note is that you don't need exactly the same versions on each end. I would keep them pretty close and I try and keep everything up to date here but if you update the goggles to get hold of the latest feature and the airside unit, the avatar unit is on a couple of versions ago, you know what, it's still going to work fine. The other tip I'll give you is get yourself some good antennas. The original antennas that came with the Walksnail system weren't very good at all and they caused some range issues. So if you're watching videos from six months ago, 
you'll hear those kind of things happening. Now, Walksnail have brought out their own antennas and you can add those on. I personally use these things here. These are Menace RC, left-hand circular polarized patches, and also some of their little stubby antennas on top, or they can get long pagoda ones as well. I would set it up this way, have the two patches here. Uh, the nice one thing about the Menace RC stuff is that you can kind of angle them up. So even if you're flying and you look down a little bit, they're still pointing into the sky. Never power your goggles on without the antennas attached. The three antennas that receive the signal are these two down at the bottom and this one here. This one is actually transmitting and communicating with the other side, the piece of technology that's in your model. So you don't want to power it up without having an antenna in that. But I just say, last tip for main things is always make sure your antennas are on before you plug the power on. So let me give you a whistle stop tour of the controls. Let's do the goggles first. Uh, so very simple controls. There's a little control at the top in the middle of the top two antennas that controls how much fan uh, you're going to get because it does blow some air over the lenses to keep them from fogging up. On the side, there are two extra buttons. This one here stops and starts recording, although you can set it up to automatically start recording when you arm the flight controller that the system's connected to. This one here is kind of a back or cancel button. And then you have a five-way joystick. This is how you enter the menu and you change things with the system. By the side of that is a bind button. Brief press of that will put it into bind. Press and holding it for eight seconds will go through the update process. Taking it over underneath, then we have the power button and that side of that is the USB-C output that does allow you to connect up to a HDMI system if you want to have something that you can show other people what you can see in the goggles when you're wearing them. And then we have the controls here, which are for the IPD adjustment, which is the distance between your pupils or your eyes and also the focus adjustment as well. Very similar setup on the VRX unit. Again, we have that five-way joystick and we have the bind button. Then there is the back button and the play button. And then we have the SD card at the side, which is kind of in between the lenses on the main goggle and you have your power input. And then there's the HDMI out underneath that you're gonna to connect to the HDMI input of your goggles. That's all the controls. Now, one of the questions I've had quite a bit is, well, what kind of goggles make the best goggle to pair with the VRX system? Well, first and foremost is you ideally want 720p capable panels. The screens in these HDO2s are that, so it will display 720p nicely. The other thing I recommend is use a goggle that has an OLED display, which is a nice crisp high contrast display with very deep blacks, but can also show the beautiful picture that you're getting from your walk snail system to the best effect. It doesn't have to be OLED, but if I would recommend if you have some goggles that are OLED technology and have the ability to do that, those are the ones I'd go for. And lastly, you want a set of goggles that have a low latency HDMI input. Uh, things like these Fat Sharks absolutely are. Most modern goggles, analog goggles, are gonna be okay. Some older ones used to have a real lot of latency for signals coming in via the HDMI port, and that meant that you know when you moved, there was a delay between the signal coming down, getting around the cable, and going into the goggles. But I would recommend if you have something like a HDO2, they're going to be a great option for you. In terms of connecting them onto the goggles, it is pretty easy and straightforward for the VRX unit. You have pads in the box that come with it, that, so you can just stick it onto the front of the goggles using those pads. However, I'm using this bracket here. This particular bracket actually came with a HD0 system. However, I have designed 3D printable versions that you can download and print so you can use whatever you want if you have this style of goggle. Then you connect the HDMI output from the bottom of the VRX into the input on your goggles. And then you need to select the HDMI input on the goggles that you have. On these HDO2s, what you do when it first powers up is you press this button here and it will cycle through the AV43 mode, AV69, and the third press will initialize the HDMI mode. And usually the screens will go like a bright blue color until it gets a valid HDMI signal. 
It will take a couple of seconds once you've powered on the VRX unit for that signal to appear. So don't worry if when you power it up, you hear the fans whirring away in the VRX unit quite loud. Uh, eventually, it will appear. However, if you have accidentally put your VRX unit into something other than 720p HD mode, then the big trick is if you press and hold the back button for five seconds, that will reset the unit to output 720p, 60 frames per second, which will pretty much work with anything. That means that if you accidentally are playing with the menus and get it so that whatever it is you're connected to won't display it, that's the way to get out of it. Press and hold the back button for five seconds and you should be good. In terms of powering the VRX and goggles, there is a cable that comes in the kit that plugs into the side of the VRX module and the goggles as well. That is designed to be plugged into a LiPo battery and it drops that LiPo battery voltage to the same as about a 2S battery. So it means that if you have spare four, three, 2S batteries hanging about, you can use the same adapter to power both the units. And I would recommend you use a battery for that. Trying to use one of these older style fat chart batteries, these kind of things here, uh, it's just not going to kind of support it. I would recommend having a nice two or 3,000 milliamp hour battery in your back pocket to run both of them to keep you going for the entire day. In terms of updating the goggles or the VRX unit or your avatar unit that you've got, Again, let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. You need to go on to the Cadix website. Again, we're back there. And you need to download the latest firmware and you need to then put the right firmware for the device onto the root directory of the SD card. So take the SD card out of whatever it is, pop it in your computer and copy it across. And again, the names that you're going to see are going to be avatar underscore GND. That's going to be for these four goggles. Then you're going to also have things like the avatar underscore sky. That is for the airside unit that has the camera on it and the antennas that you're going to put inside your model. And then the other name you're going to see is the avatar SE underscore GND with a version number afterwards. That is for your VRX unit. So just put whichever file corresponds to the technology you're updating onto the SD card, pop it back in and power the unit from the battery. Make sure the battery is nice and new so it can sit and do it. And then press and hold the bind button for eight seconds and then the system will beep, reboot, and then if it's the goggles or the VRX unit we're talking about, it's probably going to sit and beep for three, four, even five minutes. Um, don't worry about it. Just leave it alone. Eventually it will finish. It'll long beep, reboot, and you will be good to go. I would recommend when you first get your system going through that process for both the ground side unit whether it's the vrx or the goggles and also take the time to update the air side unit as well again with that you have to power that unit and plug it into the computer using the usb cable provided once it's plugged in then copy the avatar underscore sky underscore version number onto the memory in there and then just press and hold the bind button on the avatar unit for eight seconds and it will go through exactly the same process. Updating on the avatar units seems to be a lot quicker than doing it on the goggles. So it isn't a four or five minute job. It's kind of a 60 second job. Once you've got them updated, then in terms of binding, it's pretty straightforward. Once you have power the goggles, don't forget you have to press the power button as well as plug it in to the battery. Then once it's all booted and you have this display on the screen, is briefly press the bind button to press it in with something non-metallic, ideally, and the goggles will start to beep. And then with the avatar unit powered as well, briefly press the bind button and then it'll probably take five seconds for it all to figure itself out. There'll be a beeping noise and then the image will appear in your goggles or in your other goggles via the VRX unit. It's really simple and straightforward. You can also update the fonts. Now these goggles and things like the VTX unit have lots of different fonts on them and they also understand different on-screen displays. So if you're flying Betaflight or iNav or RD Pilot, it will figure it out and display the things um, automatically. And you can pick that from the menu inside the goggles. However, you can also update the fonts and that is a very, very cool thing to do. There is some really nice fonts available from a gentleman called Sneaky FPV. I'll put a link down below and it goes through full details of how you do it. 
What you do is, again, pull the SD card out of the goggles or the VRX unit, pop it onto your computer, download the files, and then copy the font underscore update.ini file along with the font PNG files onto the root of the SD card. Put the SD card back into the goggles and then open the goggle menu, go into the display part, and then click font update to update the font. And then once you've done that, you can select the custom font from the list. I would recommend absolutely doing this. Uh, the fonts from Sneaky FPV are so much nicer than the default ones, and they are being updated all the time. So be aware with things like iNav 6.0, you might have to update them. So keep an eye on Sneaky FPV's web address. Again, that link is down below, so you can go and check it out. So if you're using them and something doesn't look right, I would just then go and update the fonts because the characters might have changed. So with the latest versions of the firmware for things like the VRX and the goggles, it also now saves the on-screen display information. So if you're flying with something like Betaflight or iNav or Ardu Pilot, the information that you see in your goggles that you've set up in the flight controller is saved in a separate file with a .osd extension. So it records the video and then the OSD is a separate thing. There is a cool little tool that you can use that's actually called WSOSD dash py that you can use to then drag both of those files and recreate the view that you had in your goggles and then output that video file if you want to do that i really like it because it means sometimes when you're flying you might miss something it's kind of cool to watch it back while you're not watching where you're going you can actually look at all the on-screen display information and see that kind of maximum current that you pulled and those kind of things too again link to that tool down below i have a separate video on it if you want to know more about that one of the common questions I'm getting is how do you use it with and without a flight controller? Let's do with a flight controller first. I've added the majority of my airside units, the avatar units, into models that are running things like iNav and Betaflight. And that's very simple. There are four wires that come out of the unit. Two of them you connect to the power, and that's battery power. And then the other two connect to a spare UART on your flight controller the transmit cable from the avatar unit, connect to the receive pin on the UART and vice versa. And then in the flight control software, you set up the kind of on-screen display that you want. I would recommend using iNav version six or later with the system because that is gonna give you the right aspect ratio. Before that, it was using uh, just a kind of a four, three layout in the middle, it wasn't ideal. Configure the UART that you want in iNav version 6 or later and select it as avatar and that will work fine. In Betaflight 4.4, then in the OSD tab, enable the HD canvas to get 69 and make sure you have MSP plus display port set for the UART that you have the avatar system connected to. In 4.3, there's a little bit more that you have to do in Betaflight. You have to do things like go and select specific presets, but things like Josh Bardwell have videos on that if you want to know it. But I would recommend if you're going to be running Walksdale, update to Betaflight 4.4, update to iNav 6.0 as a minimum. You're going to get the best from Walksdale. The other part for this then is what about using it without a flight controller? Well, you absolutely can. Of course, you're not going to connect those transmit and receive pins to anything. So what does that mean? Well, the cool thing is, is that because the telemetry is coming from the flight controller to the avatar unit, not only is it being used to create the on-screen display in your goggles, it's also being used to turn the full power on. So when the unit is first initialized and powered, it's in kind of a standby mode, a low power mode to make sure it doesn't dissipate too much heat and get too hot. And then when you arm the flight controller, you, the avatar unit can see that, go to the power level that you have set, Power levels are available at 25 milliwatts and then in lots of different increments. And then once it's at full power, hopefully you're going to be flying. It's going to be cooled by the airflow. Obviously, in a model that doesn't have a flight controller, it's never going to see the arm signal. You can do that simply by going into the menu in the goggles and turning off standby mode. If you turn off standby mode, then as soon as you power the avatar unit, it goes straight to full power and you can just fly as normal. The only other thing you're gonna to have to do, of course, is manually press the record button because by default, it's all set up to just start recording automatically as soon as the system sees the flight controller is armed via telemetry. So because it doesn't have that, turn off standby mode, 
hit your record button before you fly and you can absolutely use it without a flight controller and that's incredibly handy for putting it on tops of things like boats, trucks, cars, all those things that might not have a flight controller inside. Last couple of tips, you can unlock the all the channels that are available and you can unlock the higher powers as well. This is again detailed in that same link that we've been looking at the all the way through this video. You can download the two text files, one's called avatar underscore std.txt and the other is called avatar underscore pwr.txt. Copy both of those onto the SD card and then when you power the goggles on next time, the avatar std will unlock the eight channels and the avatar underscore PWR unlock 1000 milliwatts and 1200 milliwatt power levels if you want to fly further away and if it's legal for you to do so where you live. So that's all the basics. If you're new to Walksdale, going through all that stuff should get the system in a pretty good state for you to have a great first experience with it. There's only a handful of extra things that I found that I personally would recommend that you do. I would make sure that when you are putting the model together, I would connect the avatar unit to the battery power via a separate JST lead that you can plug in. The way I tend to do it, particularly with things with flight controllers, I power the system up first, let the flight controller, things like iNav, get a GPS lock. And then the final thing I'll do is power the avatar unit up using that separate cable. That way it isn't sat there, even in standby mode, getting nice and hot on a warm sunny day. Second tip is there is an option in the goggles to select auto as your on-screen display type. Personally, I've had issues with that, with it sometimes uh, detecting the wrong kind of on-screen display. I would definitely, in your goggles, make sure that you are picking Betaflight, iNav or RD Pilot that matches the kind of model that you're flying. That way you're absolutely going to get the right fonts and the right layouts and everything in the goggles. It probably is going to get better as firmware continues, but I had issues with things like the direction to home arrow in iNav until I told the goggles, use the iNav on-screen display format, and then it all worked perfectly. Final tip is that when you are playing with the goggles, if you don't have it bound to an avatar unit that's powered so you can see what you can see out of the camera in the goggles, certain parts of the menu system will be kind of greyed out. So you'll only be able to get into the parts of the menu system that are for the goggles or the VRX unit. Once you have it connected and you're looking through the camera and all that stuff is working, then you'll find that those bits are greyed out. Uh, that were grayed out are accessible and those are things like the camera bits and pieces too. I would recommend for the camera settings, I don't tweak them a lot. The new camera that's available as part of the Avatar Pro uh, is pretty much good out of the box. With the smaller cameras, particularly with the 1S boards, I tend to go in and just tweak the exposure level from the 0.0, .0 to plus 0 0.3 EV just to make the image a little bit brighter and that can be nicer. If you're flying on bright sunny days all the time, you probably won't feel that you need that. But if you're flying when it's a bit overcast, it just brightens up the entire image and makes it look a lot nicer for you. So there you have it. That's all the stuff that I thought about. And hopefully if you're new to the system by following all that, you'll have a great time. And that hopefully for my friends who are coming to the Avatar system will mean that um, they can get going without waiting for me to go around to their house for a cup of tea. They're going to show them the ropes. If you have any questions, do pop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. But uh, if you are getting into the system, Good luck with it. I am a huge fan of walk snail. I fly on an awful lot of my stuff here that I'm not using with the DJI system and I have fallen in love with it. Hopefully that's useful for those of you and our pilots that are making the investment in walk snail for the spring. I know I get lots of comments from people who are absolutely in that boat. And now by watching one video, you kind of know all the stuff you need to do to get flying and have a great time. So good luck with it. And if you have any questions, pop them down below and I'll do my best to sort you out. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.